Draupadi. Draupadi was the daughter of Drupata, king of Panchala. She was said to have come out of a Yajnakund along with her brother Drishtadyumna, that she was an incarnation of Shakti and that she was born with a set purpose of assisting in the elimination of the wicked. Her name was Krishna, the dark maiden of Panchala. She was a very beautiful princess. She was also called as Panchali. Some philosophers have described Draupati as the mind, living with one husband out of the five for a year, as the mind functions through only one sense organ out of the five at one time. The husbands were not so much commanding the wife as the wife used to command each one of them for a set purpose to fulfill her desires at different times. King Drupata had arranged a Swayamvara, a test for the person who would like to marry Draupadi. A fish-like object was made to rotate at the top of a pole and it had to be shot down with an arrow by looking at its image in a plate of water placed on the ground. Because of Draupadi's beauty, many kings and princes had assembled including Duryodhana and Karna. Sri Krishna and Balarama were also present by invitation. Many kings tried their luck but in vain. At last, a Brahmin youth brought the target down with a single shot of an arrow. The youth was no other than Arjuna in disguise. The Pandavas were living in disguise in fear of Duryodhana's vile intentions. Drupata gave away Drup Draupati to Arjuna, who was immediately joined by his four brothers. They went to their camp and exclaimed from outside the house, Mother, we got a rare fruit today. And she asked them all to partake of it equally. Mother's wish was a command for them. Sri Krishna and Balarama also joined them by this time. The five Pandavas married Draupati one day each. Drupata celebrated the marriage very grandly. Dhridrashtra came to know that the Pandavas were alive and safe and that fate was favoring them. He gave away half the kingdom to the Pandavas. They ruled their kingdom from Indraprastha. Arjuna with Sri Krishna as driver helped the fire god Agni to burn down Kandava forest by which the indigestion of the fire god was cured. And he sent one artisan by name Maya with Arjuna who built a wondrous palace at Indraprastha. A Rajasuya Yaga was performed by Yudhishthira where all kings had come including Duryodhana. Duryodhana could not bear the beauty of the palace or the glory of the Pandavas. In the halls he mistook plain floor for water pools and water pools for plain floor and suffered disgrace. Draupati who was witnessing his predicament had a hearty laugh. This added fuel to his envy. Sri Krishna, though present there, was a silent witness, allowing incidents to develop and mature for a major operation. Duryodhana returned to Hastinapura and invited Yudhishthira for a dinner, started playing dice and made Yudhishthira lose all his kingdom. Draupati was insulted, dragged by the hair in the king's court and her apparel was asked to be stripped off. Draupati found that her husbands could not come to her rescue because of their defeat in dice, found her refuge to be only Sri Krishna and prayed to him with her full heart and she was saved. Her dress became a perennial flow of cloth. Duryodhana had a sad disappointment. Dhridrashtra tried to make amends and return their kingdom to them. But Duryodhana again made Yudhishthira play dice and sent the Pandavas to exile for 12 years and to live incognito for one year, after which they would have their kingdom back. While they were in exile, Duryodhana made many plans to destroy them or give them trouble. Once he requested sage Durvasa to go to their camp late in the day and ask for Bhiksha only to see that they failed and the sage should curse them. Durvasa went there with a thousand disciples. He was given a warm welcome and was requested to have his lunch there. But Draupati was in a dilemma. All had finished their lunch and she too and that there was no more food remaining. She reported her predicament to Sri Krishna who consoled her. 
he requested the sage and his disciples to go to the river for bath and come back meanwhile he asked draupadi to bring the cooking vessel searched inside it and found one grain of leafy food he put it into his mouth by this the sage and all the disciples at the river felt their stomachs full and began to belch there was no more space for any further food so the sage thought it wise to move away lest they should get punished by shri krishna for not eating the food that was likely to be offered at the camp in the year of incognito living draupadi was molested by kichika the brother in law of king virat uh, but bhima destroyed him without himself getting recognized when the peace parleys were going on draupadi would just unlock her hair and show this is the lock of hair pulled by the orders of duryodhana in the royal court and it awaits revenge thus she was the main spring on on which the war was being propelled to maturity after the war when ashwatthama had killed all her young sons sleeping in their tents at dead of night arjuna brought ashwatthama to draupadi's presence he shaved his tuft of hair removed his sacred crown jewel and put him to shame but draupadi had the great heart to pardon him and requested arjuna to leave him alive lest his mother be doubly bereaved both for husband and her only son when the pandavas prepared for the last journey draupadi also joined them and was the last to leave her mortal mortal coil as yudhishthira moved on